Hello and welcome back to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we are going to talk about Lewis dot structures for covalent molecules or molecular compounds. So let's take a look at how we're going to put these molecules together using the Lewis dot structures. So let's start with the most simplistic of molecules, and that would be the diatomic molecule for hydrogen, H2. And the first thing we need to know is we need to know what the atom looks like and how many electrons are available in the valence shell. So for hydrogen, that's pretty simple because it's 1s1. There's only one electron available. But there are two hydrogen atoms involved in this molecule. So the electron count is 2. So we're going to deal with two valence electrons, and we divide the valence electrons by two to see how many pairs of electrons are involved in this molecule. The next thing we look for is what are called the unshared pairs. And with hydrogen, because there's only one electron available on each atom of hydrogen, there are no pairs at all. So there won't be any unshared pairs. So subtracting zero tells us we're going to need one bond. So the two hydrogen atoms will move close enough together that they will share that pair in the middle, which creates that single bond. And this line represents the two electrons being shared between the two hydrogen atoms. So this would be the Lewis dot molecule for hydrogen H2. When we look at fluorine, and we deal with the diatomic aspect of fluorine, we know we have two fluorine atoms. Each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons because they are in the halogen column. We know all the halogens have seven valence electrons, which means if we're going to have an F2 molecule, we have a total of 14 valence electrons. Now we divide that number by two, which tells us we're going to need seven pairs of electrons. Now if you look at each hydrogen, what we realize is that each hydrogen has an unshared pair, one, two, three. And these are unshared pairs because the electrons are already paired. They're not most likely going to share with the other covalent molecule. So since we have three unshared pairs on this fluorine and three unshared pairs on this fluorine, we know we are going to get six unshared pairs. So seven minus six tells us we're going to need one bond between the two fluorine atoms. So when the fluorine atoms move close enough together, they share those two electrons in the middle. And this line here represents those two electrons being shared. This is the Lewis dot model or structure for F2 diatomic fluorine. Continuing with the idea of the diatomics, let's look at oxygen, O2. And we know that oxygen has six valence electrons. So that means in an O2 molecule, you will have 12 total valence electrons. Dividing that by two tells us we will need six pairs of electrons. And when we do the electron pairs, we look at the various ones on each atom, and we see one, two, three, four unshared pairs. So we're going to take six and subtract four, which will give us the two bonds necessary to bond oxygen together. So these two empty electrons on each oxygen will share in the middle, and those two lines represent those four electrons being shared, two pairs of electrons being shared, and this is the Lewis dot structure for diatomic oxygen, O2. When we go to nitrogen, N2, N2 has two nitrogen atoms with five valence electrons each, giving us a total of 10 valence electrons. Dividing that number by two, we need five pairs. And each nitrogen has one unshared pair, so that's a total of two unshared pairs of electrons. And five minus two tells us we will need three bonds to hold nitrogen in its N2 diatomic form. 
So the six valence electrons being shared between the two nitrogens are represented by these three lines. And this is the Lewis dot structure molecule diagram for N2 diatomic nitrogen. So let's move on and look at some more complex molecules. And let's look at the Lewis dot molecule for CH4, which is known as methane. And CH4 contains one carbon atom with four valence electrons and four hydrogen atoms with one valence electron each. So the four electrons from carbon and the four electrons from each of the hydrogens gives us a total of eight valence electrons. We divide that by two, telling us we need four pairs. There are no unshared pairs on any of the molecules, remembering that carbon is unique in that it moves its 1s2 electron to the pz suborbital, making one electron on each side of the carbon. So we need four bonds to hold this molecule together. Each hydrogen will bond on one electron of carbon, creating the four single bonds holding the hydrogens to the carbon in the methane molecule. Let's look at one last example. This is HCN, known as hydrogen cyanide. And hydrogen cyanide is put together by a carbon with four valence electrons, a hydrogen with one valence electron, and a nitrogen with five valence electrons, giving us a total of ten valence electrons. We divide that number by two, telling us we need five pairs, and we are reminded that the nitrogen has one unshared pair. So that one unshared pair is subtracted from five, telling us we need four bonds. So one of the carbon electrons will be paired with the hydrogen. That's one bond. The other three carbon electrons will be paired with the three electrons from nitrogen, making a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. So the molecule for the Lewis dot structure for hydrogen cyanide is H, single bond C, triple bond N, with the two unshared pairs of electrons on the nitrogen. So we will continue working on this in class, and we will do a series of these uh, Lewis dot molecules in class. So hopefully this helped you to prepare for that model building within our classroom. Keep working on your chemistry.